After taking a 2-0 series lead last episode, we are one more episode away from sweeping the entire Eastern Conference run. But the Bucks, of course, wanting to stop that from being the case as they'll have these two home games here to hopefully deter these Nashville sound. And we're going to get things off with a miss dunk. Would have been a great play by Powers. Thompson scores on the other end. Average 21 points per game this year. The Thompson Twins have definitely become great players here in this 2K sim. Both brothers having made at least one All-NBA team. As Asar Thompson gets his fourth point there with a the putback layup. Pick and pop. Francis Mullins bags a three. The first bucket of the episode for our sound. Pick and roll works great there for Milwaukee with a Bobby Portis layup. Now Malachi going to attack the close out there and get all the way to the cup. Box takes the screen and draws the foul. Too strong, though, on that first free throw. Splits him. Box here off the handoff. Attacking downhill once more, and Thompson with his third bucket on the inside this time gets a third point attached to it. Lowry spinning, trying to go up top for Ernest Augustine, but is tipped away. Milwaukee running. Sohan going to pull up for a three. I think we'll take that shot anytime Milwaukee wants it. Malachi pulled up mid-range, but he pulled it right. Milwaukee going to Thompson again and again. He scores. What a start for Asar Thompson. And like I off a double screen, gets all the way to the cup. It's the second time he's attacked aggressively today, and I want to see more of it. Asar continues to just be a problem here for Lamont Powers. And like I from deep this time, and he hits his first triple of the ball game. Vanderbilt off the drive. Great defense by Ernest Augustine to force the miss. Lowry pushes it in transition for a three from the answer. Vanderbilt left all alone for three, and he shows us why. Nashville taking it the other way, but it's stolen away by De'Aaron Fox. Now he's pushing a tough man to catch up to. Lowry does, but he commits a foul. will be free throws three and four for De'Aaron here as we approach the halfway point of this first quarter and Milwaukee still has the lead they have not been ahead for a very large portion of this series so far they've got off to a nice start especially defensively here in this game and then of course the SARS been great for them on the offensive end. Uh, Alley-oop in traffic there for Sohan. Lowry deep three off the catch. Can't quite make it count. Vanderbilt inside. Whips it out to Sohan. Catch and shoot three is too strong. Shot clock winding down. Lowry's just going to have to take a shot and he bricked it short. Yaren. Mid-range shot. Had a little bit too much mustard, but he gets the steal. The second time he's done that in transition today. This time, trying to get it inside to Portis and is stolen right back. Hours quick to pull the trigger in transition. It was a good look, but can't get it to fall. Thompson continues to carry this Bucks offense here today. Lowry drives baseline, kicks it to Pope. Another missed three. A lot of missed jumpers here on both sides in this first quarter. Sohan going to add to that number with that missed long ball. Mullins, there you go. Get it down inside. You can't hit your jump shots. Get it into the paint. 
Aaron Fox, another miss. Powers finds a cutting Malachi. Who goes off glass for two. It's a one-point ball game here. Three minutes remain in the first. Ortis found the angle he needed to score on Ernest Augustine. Nice play design there by the sound, but it's going to get blocked. I thought we got a pretty good look from Powers. Just the help defense made the play, and the Bucks get the quick basket on the other end. Davidson, deep three, and it's right down the barrel. His first shot attempt of game three. Milwaukee still with a narrow lead here. Sohan trying to add to it, but he can't hit it. There. Gafford, though, Daniel Gafford on the offensive rebound, but missed it once more. Davidson steps back. Not a great shot. I mean, I know he hit his first one, but... I don't mean you take that kind of shot. Luckily, Powers and Stevens able to clean it up. Aaron Fox is, misses once more. Nashville going the other way. We find Bowman on the inside, but he missed it. Rebound by Gafford. Fox on the drive. Scores right around Sidney Lowry. There was not a lot of space there, but he found the angle. Much better look here for Davidson, and he hits his second triple, and that puts Nashville on top. Been trailing pretty much this entire quarter. So, nice to see us in the lead here, as we have one more possession in the first quarter. Going to be a pick and roll inside to AC Stevens. Beautiful pass, and a nice finish to make it 29-26 to in favor of our sound. Heading into the second quarter. Now in the second, Cole Anthony on the drive. Stops and pops for two. To get things started for Milwaukee. Asar. Gets going right where he left off in the first with that basket. Now we're going to Mullins. Guarded by Gafford. Strong drive inside to get... The foul and the layup. And the three-point play is complete. Gafford going up top for Asar Thompson. That was a nice oop. Perfectly executed by Milwaukee. Mil Malachi on the other end. Another strong drive. It's been doing that more in this game than we're used to seeing, and I like it. Ty Washington steps out of bounds. Tyrese Halliburton style. Mullins. Good defense played by Gafford, but with the left hand, able to finish over the top all the same. Pick and roll to Kai Jones. He steps out of bounds. Phil Bowman, a nice job holding his ground on defense. Back to Mullins. Another strong drive. This one... Just off the mark, though, but he cleans it back up. Nashville leads by six. Anthony for three. Too strong. Mullins way deep. No dice on that one. That's not a great look. I don't know why. We saw AC Stevens take a similar shot. I don't know why that's a play in our playbook. It's the Cleveland playbook. So is that meant for Jared Allen? I don't think so. We've seen it a couple times here in this playoff run, and it's not a look I'd like to see us continue to take. Asar with a high floater off glass. Augustine left alone from beyond the arc, and he makes Milwaukee pay. Vanderbilt from the corner. I don't know if Jared Vanderbilt's somebody you need to guard so closely from the three-point line that you foul him. But hey, that's just me. So far, he's split his first two attempts. Vanderbilt goes two for three. Mullins just fires quickly this time over Gafford. He's doing a nice job exploiting the mismatch there against Daniel. Lowry driving in on Sohan. Finishes through traffic. There were a lot of white shirts in the area 
Aaron Fox, step back three. Just has not been able to get the jumper going today. Nashville the other way. Fade away from Sidney Lowry. You can't guard that. Nashville now leads by double digits. So hand up and in for two. With the foul on top of it. One hand free throw up and in. Now... It is around this point, is after this possession, that I would experience a little bit of technical difficulties. Um, the recording just stopped, and my guess as to what happened was that I had dinner around when I was recording this, and I think rather than pausing the game to go get my dinner, I pressed stop recording, which means... We skip a, about a quarter ahead here, and we were up by 20, so we'll go just into the makes here in the third quarter. I do apologize. It's been a while since I've had technical difficulties. I had quite a few in my first year on YouTube. I feel like I've, I was overdue for something dumb to happen on my end on the recording, so I do apologize for missing... The end of the second and a big chunk of the third quarter. I ended up finding out about it because my computer went to sleep. And it doesn't do that when it's recording. So thought about just restarting the game, but I didn't really have time. And I didn't want to ruin this great game from the team. And of course, we jumped from going from 10 ahead to 20 ahead. So you knew it was a good third quarter there. And here as we end the third, up by 26... I think we can go ahead and sim cast this one. So game three going to be shorter than I wish it would have been. But that's just my bad. So let's now sim cast. See if Milwaukee can make some sort of run and we'll hop back in if that is the case. But so far, just looking like we can go ahead and simulate this one out. 129 to 96 is your final amount. Uh, Sarah Thompson, excuse me, ends up with quite a productive day. 30 points, 10 rebounds for him. And we got three guys over 24 points today. And Sidney Lowry only had 16 points, and we still blew somebody out by 30. So you love to see that. And that'll get us into game four. No technical difficulties with this one. But we do have a chance to clinch our ticket to the NBA Finals here with one more win. Lamond in the corner. That three is up and out. Portis steps back. Had some space there, but can't make it count. Lowry off the catch. Drills that three-point attempt. The first basket for Nashville in this one. Vanderbilt, tough shots. It's it to go. Over Ernest Augustine. Malachi for three. Has all the space he needs to make that an easy one. Ortis. We've seen him shoot a lot here in game four to start us off. And mixed results on those ones. That alley-oop attempt just a little bit too congested. And in transition, Ernest Augustine swats that Asar Thompson shots. Wanted nothing to do with that weak attempt. What a block. Probably the defensive highlights of the postseason so far. After the block, Milwaukee... Having a tough time finding a shot. They'll just have to heave up a late shot clock three. Pick and roll here. From the young Duke duo. And it gets Malachi all the way to the rim. That one's tipped away. By Mullins. He's up ahead. Lowry finds him. And it's a two-hand slam. Getting Nashville the 10-4 lead early. Sohan all alone there. When that free throw line extended mid-range shot. Hope on the drive. This is out to the big man. But the jumper is off. Asar Thompson racing past everybody in transition. Getting all the way to the rim. 
He just blew by our whole team. Asar hits the first. And the second free throw as well. Powers inside to Mullins. The jumper is missed. Asar racing in transition again. And it's Sohan with the basket. I'm not used to other teams beating us in transition. That's usually our game here. Larry with a nice mid-range shot. They can roll. To Vanderbilt. Off glass, no good. Powers with strong defense. Stolen away on that. Pass attempt intended for Ernest Augustine. And the fancy finish on the other end from Asar Thompson. Definitely a high caliber athlete. And he's showing it off there. Aaron inside. Blocked away by Sidney Lowry. Tremendous defense there. And it's going to lead to a wide open Malachi shot. And those are just rarely going to be missed by him. Yaren, no good on his jumper. Not the best shooting episode for Fox. Tough shot inside for Lowry. He missed it. But Mullins on the board. Gets a good shot for Powers. That's missed too. Another board. And... Third time is not the charm on that possession. We miss all three, but Lowry steals the ball right back, gets to the rim, and finishes over Aaron Fox. Fourth time's a charm there. Sar Thompson's jump shot is blocked, but then Malachi stops. He had a clear lane to the basket, and he said, Nah, I don't want it. But we get a wide open dunk anyway, which is probably what we would have had in transition. Another block here by Francis Mullins. The defense. Absolutely on one right now. And as is Sidney Lowry. What a dunk. Oh my. Embarrassing De'Aaron Fox on the drive. That was quite the poster. Now Nashville getting in transition. But... Settling for a terrible shot. There is Malachi Pope. Off the dribble. Jaren misses. Now we've got Lowry. Nice job to create some space on the drive. Just weird that he pulled up there. Still made it. Gafford is fouled on the pick and roll. It's a chance at a pair of free throws. Which he goes two for two on. Isolation for Lowry. Going against Tai Tai Washington. He'll draw the shooting foul. With Darren Fox reaching in. He can't quite get both to fall though. He has been much more involved here in the first quarter than we were seeing in game three. When he didn't top 20 points. I can't remember the last time... I've seen Sidney Lowry only get 16 points in the game that I watched. Bowman with it. Finds a cutting Davidson who finds a wide open man in the corner. Sidney Lowry continues his strong first quarter. Ortis, no good from three. Davidson with it now. He's pulling up. And missing his long ball. Fox just dribbles it right into the knee of Sidney Lowry. He's running in transition and going for the two-handed slam. Coast to coast for the kid. Last shot here of the first quarter is a wide open three for Bobby Portis. So the Bucks will eventually get to 20 in the quarter. Took him all 12 minutes to do it though. Oh, solid attempt here to start the second, but he can't hit it. Anthony with a similar miss on the other end. This time Malachi steps in and drills the mid-range shot. He's up to 10 already. Asar. Now we're just turning into a jump shooting contest here. Christian Davidson's turn. He's taking it on the inside. Spinning and hitting with the left. Nice drive. From Christian Davidson. 
is probably the best player on our team that we've yet to nickname now that we've found one for Malachi Pope. Especially since he's been on the team since season three. Pope floats it up and in over the top of Ty Ty Washington. Effort inside. Forcing the miss is Francis Mullins. Pope for three. And he drilled it. It only took us 14 and a half minutes to get a 20 point lead here in the game. I guess it's technically 19, but absolute dominance to start game four. Let's transition to the makes. See if Milwaukee can't make a comeback in this game. Good finish in traffic from Moses Moody. Sar Thompson. He's driving in on. Moses Moody, with the shot clock expiring, gets the lefty hook shot to go. Well, Anthony, step back. That was nice. And he finishes it off. Lowry. Wide open three off the screens. Excellent job by Davidson and Mullins there. There was not a defender even threatening to contest that shot. From the corner, Moses Moody gets a screen. Going inside. Shot clock winding down. Needs to find something and another tough finish. It's not something we're used to seeing from Moses, but he's showing it off today. A block on the alley-oop attempt from Mullins is going to lead to a perfectly executed fast break. Pope to Lowry for two. Sohan floats one in. The lead is now 19 here with four minutes left in the second quarter. Sar thought about taking the shot. Instead, dishes to Vanderbilt, who finishes the play inside. Double comes for Lowry. He dishes it off to Davidson. Missed that shot. But AC Stevens finds us an even better one from deep. Sar, stop and pop from the mid-range. You know, it hasn't been a great series overall for Milwaukee, but especially this episode, Asar Thompson has been excellent. Here he hits a three. He's just trying to keep Milwaukee in this game, but we're just too high-powered of an offense. We're just too suffocating of a defense. It's kind of funny the difference is Ernest Augustine is going to get swatted before halftime. It's kind of funny the difference between this year and last year's team, how I was confident, you know, with a 19-point lead, nine and a half minutes left in the second quarter to just transition to the makes and how confident I was that we were going to win the game when we could have like a 25-point lead at halftime with last year's team. A team that only lost twice in the entire playoffs, by the way, but I was still less confident in us being able to finish those games than I am with this team. And it's all because of the defense. Oh, that's a nice layup high off the glass. In transition. Hope up top for Ernest Augustine all over Bobby Portis. Oh my, what an alley-oop. You gotta love the alley-oop poster, man. That was insane. And this is exactly what we do. We play the great defense, and then we get out and we demoralize you in the fast break. This change from Andre Stevens to Ernest Augustine in the starting lineup. One thing that I've noticed in the positive is this team gets out and runs more than we did previously. I don't know if Andre Stevens was the cause of that necessarily because he was a good athlete, but it's certainly a, a change here in this Year six team compared to the year five one. Half three there from Bowman gonna extend our lead to 27. Sar Thompson from deep. Continues to be kind of the lone bright spot for Milwaukee. Box. It's the inside shot. Now that one's stripped away from Sohan in transition. Malachi just gonna float it up. Wish he would have given it to Lamont. Maybe he would have had a highlight dunk there. There was one 
Unfortunately, in the one minute that was removed from... Sorry, the one quarter that was removed from game three. Come on, had a really nice transition dunk. I wish y'all could have seen. But technical difficulties got in the way. And now with this foul here from Moses Moody, assuming he makes two for two, that's going to extend our lead all the way to 30, which means we could probably wrap this one up. And he does go two for two. 84 to 54. A couple minutes left here in the third. And the boys took care of business today, much like they have all throughout this playoff run. I mean, truly, I can't remember the last time that, you know, wasn't including the regular season when we were specifically looking for these games. Like a game that I watched from the start, when's the last time the game wasn't already decided in the final, you know, five minutes? It's been quite some time, and this is going to be another elimination game where we hold a team under 80 points. That is just insane defense. Now, Milwaukee's not the best offensive team, I'll give you that. They're more specialized in defense, and they held us to 102 today. But we have now officially booked our tickets to our second consecutive NBA Finals here with a 102-78 victory over the Milwaukee Bucks on the road. Nashville goes 12-0 through the Eastern Conference on their way to the Finals. No team so much as making them break a sweat in the fourth quarter of these games. Nashville has truly become an absolutely elite team. Too soon to be talking Dynasty because this is just their second year of this level of play. But with the youth on this team, you've got to think that they aren't going anywhere anytime soon as we lift the trophy. Stamping our tickets to our second consecutive finals. We don't quite know yet who we will be facing off. We'll find that out in just a few minutes. 40 points here from Lowry. He's back on track to his normal levels of production after just 16 points in game three. So let's find out who we're facing off against here from the West. Could be a rematch against Seattle. Uh, against the Spurs, excuse me, or an expansion matchup against Seattle, and it will be against the Sonics. Victor Wimbayama, despite losing, wins the Western Conference Finals MVP. Didn't even force seven games, but the loser still wins the Conference Finals MVP. Mullins winning it for the sound. Mostly, I would guess, due to his dominant rebounding. Now, here's the Sonics roster that made it. This is... Definitely a surprise. They lost their in the entire top of their roster in the offseason. And I thought that was going to mean that they were going to be a much worse team. That did not end up being the case. They signed a new team and made their first finals appearance, despite the fact that I thought their previous score was a lot better. But here's a look at what this team has done throughout the playoffs thus far. Um... We've got five guys in double figures. Ernest Augustine's just outside of that at 9.1. Lowry's still leading us, but Pope not far behind. And, you know, the biggest worry I had when we traded Andre Stevens is would we start to get punished on the glass? But Francis Mullins single-handedly makes that uh, not a problem at all for us. He has been insane. So looking at team stats, we are both the best offense and the best defense. The fact that we're dominating so much defensively is really impressive considering that the sliders give you boosts to being able to score in this game. So the fact that we're so much better than everybody else on the defensive end, even with the sliders working against us, is just truly Incredible. We're also the best rebounding team by a decent bit on the defensive side, which is, in my opinion, the more important of them. 
but lead, we lead all the playoff teams in assists per game in the playoffs so far. Um, we go over to opponent field goal percentage. We're not the best. The Sonics actually are the best. Uh, we are the fifth best in that regard, but just forcing turnovers and scoring off of those turnovers has been a massive boost to this team. Like I said, just much more than even last year. We are playing great defense and we are running in transition and it's made the team just that much more dominant than what was already a dominant postseason run last time. We're also holding our opponents to 30% from three, which is pretty good if you ask me. So this playoff run, probably even more dominant than our last one. Maybe not the individual dominance like Lowry, but team dominance were right there. The finals! Coming up next, until then, sound up.